Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Dear students, uh, Business Economics ECO 400 ke lecture number 21 mein khush aamdeed. Uh, welcome back. Uh, ja, pehle ki tarah, uh, shuru mein hum pishle lecture pe baat karenge chand minute ke liye aur uske baad aaj ka lecture shuru karenge. So what we have learned in the previous lecture, we talked about the uh, different interest rate that prevail in the economy and then how we can relate uh, those interest rate with the inflation rate in the country or in the economy and expected inflation in the economy. So as we discussed in the previous lecture that nominal interest rates equals real interest rate plus inflation, right? So and with the help of this equation or identity we have tried to determine the Fisher effect, right? We said that that real exchange or the real variables are uh, given in the long run so we can establish one to one relationship between the uh, nominal interest rate and the expected inflation in the economy or in the country and they both move uh, this one to one relationship between nominal interest rate and expected inflation is known as the Fisher effect. Now they both uh, variables move in the opposite direction uh, neg negatively related. Uh, suppose if there is an increase in the expected inflation in the economy, this will lead to decrease in the nominal interest rate in the country. After that, we have talked about the money demand function. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the previous lectures, we know that we proved that money demand depends on the national income or the real income in the economy. Right, but in this in the previous lecture in the is that chapter we have said that there is a determinant of uh, money demand, so that that is that was the nominal interest rate. That nominal interest rate and income are the two main determinants of money demand. As we said that uh, money demand and income are positively correlated. If there is increase in the real income of the in con economy the demand for money will go up or increases, right? So, uh, positive, positive relationship between the real income of the country and the money demand in the economy. Now, uh, if we talk about uh, the second determinant, we have said that another determinant is money demand and that is nominal interest rate hai aur nominal interest rate ka money demand ke saath inverse relationship hai agar nominal interest rate badh deta hai to people prefer to hold or save money in or deposit money in the bank instead of holding money with themselves right so and vice versa so nominal interest rate and money demand are inversely or negatively correlated with each other uh, this is what we have learned in the previous lecture and then we talked about uh, the cost of inflation. We have uh, discussed different cost of expected inflation, like for example, shoe leather cost, manual cost, uh, tax and relative price distortions, inconvenience of correct figures for inflation. So all are the social cost of inflation or expected inflation in the economy. And uh, then we have also discussed these are the expected in, uh, inflation and sometimes there are social costs with the unexpected inflation. All of the above plus arbitrary dis redistribution of wealth between doctors, uh, debtors, sorry, between debtors and creditors. Right. So, jitni bhi upar humne baat ki, jitni bhi social cost ki baat ki, that in case of the expected inflation, wo sari plus usme uh, arbitrary redistribution of wealth between debtors and creditors, right? So that is again one of the social costs of uh, unexpected inflation.
last uh, what we've learned in the lecture the last concept was the hyperinflation so caused by rapid money supply growth yeah, when money printed to finance given budget deficit so if the government uh, wa uh, want to raise the revenue by printing money or they print excessive money supply in the economy more notes in circulation that become the cause of uh, hyperinflation so normally if inflation or pi is greater than or equal to 50 percent we can say that there is hyperinflation in the economy now uh, now why it happens because government want to raise its revenue uh, because taxes ki wajah se government ka revenue pura nahi hota ya dusre sources of income se government ka revenue pura nahi hota the only option left with the government is to print more money to increase the money supply in the economy jab government money supply badhati hai excessive money supply growth hoti hai to rate of inflation bad jata hai and that um, up to go highest level and that become the hyper inflation now and now what is the policy implication basically what the government should do instead of printing money they should uh, do some uh, fiscal reforms right instead of printing money fiscal reforms means as we know that fiscal policy has two sides on one side we have the revenue the other side is expenditure so if the government cannot raise its revenue by increasing taxes or some other sources what they can do that they can reduce expenditure they can minimize their expenditure to control or uh, to keep the balance between revenue and expenditure instead of printing money that will lead to the hyperinflation so that is the the recommendation or the option with the policy so how they can stop hyperinflation by adopting fiscal reforms in the country or in the economy so this was all about the previous lecture now we'll come to the today's uh, lecture so aaj aur agle lecture mein yani lecture number 21 aur 22 mein inshallah hum koshish karenge we'll talk about the open economy right so we'll talk the first part of open economy now when we talk about open economy how it is different from the closed economy now closed economy is that economy in which countries does not involve themselves in international trade engage themselves in international trade right so when the countries involve themselves in international trade exports and imports ki baat karte hain capital inflow outflow ki baat karte hain right so purchase of foreign assets purchase of domestic asset by the foreigners so all these activities comes in the open economy right so open economy mein jab aap trade mein involve hote hain export imports karte hain capital and flow outflow ki baat hoti hai trade balance ki baat hoti hai balance of payment ki baat hoti hai all these activities comes in the scope of open economy now what we are going to learn in today's lecture will start to discuss what is open economy right and then we'll try to bring saving investment into picture and try to determine the equilibrium in the open economy and then we'll talk about uh, different experiments uh, and particularly three experiments and see how we can uh, bring equilibrium or how we can uh, adjust the open economy and with the help of those experiments well to we start with the open economy now spending need not equal investment so in case of open economy jab open economy ki baat karte hain it is not necessarily that uh, uh, spending should be equal to output right so there are some other sources in which uh, in which the government or the economies can raise their output and they can uh, use that output for spending or for expenditure similarly it's not necessarily that is all saving uh, must be equal to investment saving need not equal investment right so uh, this, uh, the gap between saving and investment can be financed through the open economy by capital inflow and outflow or foreign direct investment ki jab hum baat karte hain foreign portfolio investment ki jab baat karte hain to usse ye aap uh, gap fill kar sakte hain if there is a saving is less or greater than the investment so we'll start with the uh, some uh, notations that we are going to use uh, in these two lectures now as we know that 
consumption is equal to C. The consumption has two components. Uh, one is the domestic consumption, uh, and then number is the uh, consumption on foreign goods. Right. So consumption on domestic goods and services plus consumption on foreign goods and services. Right. Then investment has again two parts. One is the domestic investment, the other is foreign investment. Similarly, government spending has two parts also. And one is the domestic uh, consumption, uh, domestic government spending, and the other is foreign government spending. Some other notations. So, we have said that consumption, when we talk about it, it has two parts. Usme domestic consumption bhi aa jati hai, aur foreign consumption bhi aa jati hai. consumption of domestic goods and services and consumption of the imported goods are the goods which have been imported from other countries to uski baat bhi karte hain isi tarah investment ki jab hum baat karte hain it includes both domestic investment the investment done or capital invested in domestic economy or the inv foreign investment means are is do tarah ki foreign investment is the investment by the foreign in domestic country and the investment of the domestic resident in some foreign country right so investment again has two parts domestic and foreign investment इसी तरह जब हम गवर्नमेंट एक्सपेंडिचर की बात करते हैं तो उसके भी दो हिस्से हैं दो कंपोनेंट हैं एक जो है डोमेस्टिक गवर्नमेंट स्पेंडिंग है एक इंटरनेशनल और फॉरेन गवर्नमेंट स्पेंडिंग एंड देन वी विल नो दैट ईएक्स इज फॉर द एक्सपोर्ट्स फॉरेन स्पेंडिंग फॉरेन स्पेंडिंग ऑन डोमेस्टिक गुड्स एंड देन एम इज द इंपोर्ट्स दैट इज स्पेंडिंग ऑन फॉरेन गुड्स that is equal to cf plus if plus gf if we add up the uh, a foreign consumption on foreign goods investment on foreign goods and government spending on foreign goods that gave us basically the imports of the country right so practically imports is the consumption on imported goods or the foreign goods investment on the imported goods uh, foreign goods and government spending on the foreign goods now if we take the difference between ex that is the export and then iem which is the imports that will give us the country's net exports right to dono ko jo difference hai export aur imports ka agar aap nikal le to that will give you the net exports of the economy or the country so nx is equal to uh, that is the net export is equal to ex minus iem right so more sometime uh, this the difference between exports and imports is also known as the trade balance of the economy of the country right so jab aap trade balance ki kabhi baat ho to you can tell or you can uh, uh, explain that trade balance basically is the difference between exports of a country and imports of a country agar exports se aap imports nikal dete ho to jo aapke paas cheez bachti hai usko net export kaha jata hai and the same is also known as the trade balance of the economy or of the country now gdp basically is the expenditure on domestically produced goods and services in the economy and in the previous lectures if you remember हमने एक आइडेंटिटी जो है बनाई थी नेशनल इनकम आइडेंटिटी के नाम से एंड दैट वाज वाई इज इक्वल टू सी डोमेस्टिक कंजम्पशन प्लस डोमेस्टिक इन्वेस्टमेंट एंड देन डोमेस्टिक गवर्नमेंट एक्सपेंडिचर एंड इफ वी ऐड अप द नेट एक्सपोर्ट इन दैट विल गिव अस द बेसिकली जी डी पी ऑफ एन इकानमी सो दिस कैन बी रिटर्न एज एज वी हैव सेट दैट in the previous slides again if you remember cd is equal to c uh, that the sorry c is equal to and uh, that the domestic assumption cd plus cf right so if you rearrange that equation so we'll get cd is equal to c minus cf to us us value ko yahan pe substitute kar le cd ki jagah to we'll get c minus cf plus isi tarah dusri jo equation humne dekhi that investment is equal to id plus uh, Uh, I F. So if we rearrange that equation and find out the domestic investment, that would be equal to I minus I F. So उसको यहाँ पे substitute कर लें I D की जगह. इसी तरह G D जो है is the government uh, expenditure on domestic goods. So how we can find from the previous slide? आपको पता है कि domestic that G is equal to G D plus G I, right? 
so as GF so uh, government spending is equal to domestic consumption plus consumption uh, by the government on foreign goods right so if from wape up uh, you can find GD GD is equal to G minus GF plus EX as it is so ye tino jo hai humne CID ki value bhi substitute kar liye yahan pe ID ki value bhi substitute ki aur GD ki bhi substitute ki then we have the this equation C minus CF plus I minus IF plus G minus GF plus EX jo ke aapko samne nazar aa raha hai now if we simplify this equation uh, we can get C plus I plus G plus EX to jitne bhi positive uh, sign ke saath component hai unko humne ek jagah pe kar liya hai aur negative sign ke saath jo component hai unko humne ek jagah pe kiya hai to C plus I plus G plus EX minus CF plus IG plus uh, IF plus GF so we have two components of the above equation one is the positive uh, sign uh, the parameter the variable with positive sign and the variable with negative sign now as we know that we can write this is basically the CF plus IF plus GF is the difference between exports and imports because it is the consumption on uh, foreign goods plus investment on foreign goods plus government spending on foreign goods so in tino ko agar jama karenge so that will give us the difference between exports minus imports so you can just replace this term right uh, so we get c plus i plus g plus ex minus this will become jitni bhi consumption hoti hai uh, foreign consumption jitni bhi consumption hoti hai uh, sorry government spending hoti on foreign goods and investment on foreign goods so that component basically are known as the imports of a domestic country right to ex aur ye pura jo component hai aapka cf plus if plus gf hai ye imports ban jata hai right so we can write the above equation as c plus i plus g plus ex aur jaisa ki maine kaha ki cf plus if plus gf is the imports of the country so yahan pe minus im aa jayega right so this will give us the identity that c plus i plus g plus nx so this is basically aapne dekha ki humne we started from the gdp definition gross domestic product ki definition se humne shuru kiya and we said that the output r y is equal to cd plus id plus gd plus ex so d means show means all domestically goods and produce on pe jitni consumption hoti hai on pe jitni investment hoti hai isi tarah government spending jo domestics hoti hain isi tarah net exports jo aati hain and the difference unka that includes in in gdp right but usse humne how we have drive we have drive the uh, that uh, uh, equation for an open economy so we get the national income identity we started from the income identity of a closed economy so that was uh, c y is equal to c d plus i d plus g d plus e x so from this equation humne we will try to find out the national income identity in an open economy jab hum open economy baat karte hain the country means country involve itself in the international trade so we got this identity so that is known as the uh, national income identity uh, in a open economy so that is y is equal to c plus i plus g plus nx now uh we can rearrange this equation to find the net exports of economy is equation se agar aap isko rearrange kar le so we can get this equation nx is equal to y minus c plus i plus g now uh, this equation has three components if you look in a, uh, on the slide to so teen hisse hain on the left side nx is the net exports on the right side we have two components of the equation one first component is the output in the economy the second is domestic spending right so if you subtract the output from domestic spending the remaining amount uh, which is left with the economy basically that is the net exports of the country so from an open economy identity we are able to find uh, the net export of an economy that is equal to y minus c into uh, c plus i plus g so that is the total output in the economy minus and the domestic spending gave us the net exports of a country 
Now we'll continue with this. Uh, we'll try to explain that. So we have the net export identity with us. And uh, that is uh, Y minus C plus I plus G. So if we add up the consumption investment plus G, so this will uh, come equal to the import. So we can rewrite this identity. NX is equal to EX minus IM, right? So this tells us the difference between export and import and known as the net export of the country. Now there are two possibilities, three different, sorry, three different possibilities to explain this equation. So if the country's trade is surplus, so what it means that this component, the export component, this is bigger than the import component, right? EX is greater than uh, IM. It means output is greater than spending, right? So when output is greater than spending, our uh, EX is greater than IM, so the country's trade is in surplus, right? So so sir, when the trade is surplus, what is happening? It means the country is in earning more income. Uh, uh, so what the country will do with this extra income which he is getting from the net export, baad mein baad karenge. Isse economies kya karti hain? They purchase or they invest in foreign countries, right? So that will become the capital inflow of that particular country. To iski baad mein baad karenge. So sometime the trade will go into deficit also, and that is the situation when NX uh, so is negative, or you can say the exports are less than the imports or you can say that output of the economy is less than foreign spending on consumption investment and government expenditure so it depends uh, size of this uh, trade deficit will be equal to n minus n x right so difference between export and imports can be explained in terms of trade deficit and trade surplus or Sometime a kasi situation bhi economy mein aati hai jahan pe export imports ke barabar ho jati hai to usko hum trade balance ka naam dete hai to trade is in balance when both exports and imports are equal or you can say output is equal to C plus I plus G so that situation is known as the trade balance in the economy. Now this was the first part. So when the country, when we talk about open economy, कि जब हम बात करते हैं, हम ये कहते हैं countries जो है international trade में involved हैं, तो दो तरह की markets में वो involved होती हैं. एक तो अभी हमने recently बात की goods market की, जहाँ पे they sell or they export or import different goods and services from different countries. दूसरी जो market है, the country can involve itself in financial market. तो financial market की जब हम बात करते हैं, तो countries sometimes buy uh, foreign assets sometimes they sell asset to the foreigners so that becomes a capital inflow or outflow ki jahan pe hum baat karte so now we'll talk about the second part of an open economy pehla part mein humne baat ki export or imports ki goods and services ki baat ki dusri jo abhi baat karte hain we'll talk about capital inflow and outflow ki baat karenge so and that that term that is used in the trade is the international capital flows or the capital flows between economies now as we know that net capital outflow is equal to saving minus investment now that is equal to net outflow of loanable funds right so net capital outflow is the difference between the country's purchase of foreign assets that is the capital outflow minus foreign purchases of the domestic assets so the net capital outflow hai wo do cheezon ka agar aap difference le le so that will tell you the net capital outflow of an economy right so the country purchases of foreign assets jaise ki agar pakistan aur america ki hum baat kare to pakistan agar america mein kuch assets khareed karta hai ya investment karte hain to that is pakistan outflow right if America invest in Pakistan or buy or purchase some assets from Pakistan so that is capital inflow for Pakistan but capital outflow for America so jab Pakistan ne some people from our Pakistan has invested in uh, United States so are purchased foreign assets from United States so that become the uh, for a capital outflow for Pakistan and capital inflow for uh, United States and if we similarly if uh, United States 
has purchased some of the assets from Pakistan are invested in Pakistan so that will become capital inflow for Pakistan and outflow for United States so the net capital outflow is the difference between NCO net capital outflow is equal to the uh, country purchase of foreign assets minus the foreign purchases of the domestic assets right so when we say that saving is greater than investment so then we have a country's is net lender right so when saving is greater than investment it means uh, the capital NCO is positive capital net uh, net capital outflow is positive that what it means jab NCO positive hoga humne jab ye kaha main chale main i can write an equation for you net capital and out outflow is equal to capital outflow CEO minus capital inflow right so it is uh, uh, capital outflow minus capital inflow so when we say that saving is greater than investment in that case this part capital outflow is bigger than the, the capital inflow part right so jab saving investments are zyada hoti hain jo domestic country they try to buy or purchase or try to do investment in other countries right so when s is less than country's net borrower so mean and they need for investment foreigners will come into the country the investment in the country that will become the capital inflow for the economy now the link between uh, how we can determine the link between these two oh, but uh, that is the trade as balance a trade surplus ki jab humne baat ki aur capital flows ki baat ki to kis tarah se in do cheezon ko hum link up kar sakte hain right to do cheezon ko humne abhi discuss kiya we have talked about the trade uh, surplus trade of goods and services then we have talked about capital inflow and outflow ki humne baat ki aur ab dono ko kis tarah se aapas mein link kiya ja sakta hai so as we know that nx net exports is equal to y minus c plus i plus g implies isko hum rearrange kar lein equation ko to we can write y minus c minus g minus i r net exports is equal to s minus i right so nx is equal to s minus i so s minus i jaisa ki humne kaha that is the country's net capital outflow we can say that nx the difference between net exports is equal to the net capital outflow so both uh, uh, how this uh, identity hold true so how we can explain this identity that trade balance is equal to net capital outflow on the left side of the equation jab hum baat karte hain to trade of goods and services between the countries aur dusri side pe hum baat karte hain ki the it is the difference between purchase of foreign assets by the foreigners uh, by the domestic country or the uh, uh, investment in foreign countries by the domestic residents so uh, we can bring these two forces together that is the difference between net exports uh that is the trade and the capital flows in the economy so nx can be equal to uh, that is the difference between saving minus investment or you can say that the purchase of uh, foreign uh, for uh, foreign assets uh, i minus the purchase of foreign assets by the domestic country right so the difference between capital uh, outflow and the difference uh, and capital inflow is the net capital outflow so net exports is equal to the uh, difference between these two outflows in the economy capital outflow or inflow ke barabar hoti hai so we can relate these two uh, parameters and we can explain and uh, this so uh, thus a country with a trade deficit the country jahan pe trade deficit hoga how we can say that the country is the trade is in deficit and when nx is less than zero it mean exports are is less than imports to jab exports jo hain zyada uh, exports kam hongi imports zyada hongi to countries basically jo saving or investment ka jo difference hota hai saving will be less than investment jitni country ki saving hogi wo investment ki bajaye वो सारी की सारी उस पर जो ट्रेड डेफिसिट पे उस पर एक्सपेंड हो जाएगी तो वी कैन से दैट वेन 
the country's trade is in deficit when nx is less than zero to wo jo dusra component hai open economy ka that is the net capital outflow wo bhi negative hoga negative means ke bahut zyada uh, capital inflow is more than the capital outflow so and vice versa agar hum baat karte hain ki country's trade is in surplus the difference between export and imports is positive so we can say that saving will be greater than investment and nco that net capital outflow will be positive so what we have concluded from uh, the link between the trade balance and the capital flows हमने क्या नतीजा खज किया हमने ये मालूम किया कि जब किसी मुल्क का ट्रेड डेफिसिट होगा ट्रेड विल इज इन डेफिसिट तो जो कैपिटल और नेट कैपिटल आउटफ्लो है वो नेगेटिव होगा इट मींस कैपिटल इनफ्लो ज्यादा है और कैपिटल आउटफ्लो कम है एंड हमने ये भी कहा कि जब कंट्री किसी मुल्क का कंट्री का ट्रेड ट्रेड जो है बैलेंस वो एज इन सर इन सर प्लस पॉजिटिव होगा तो क्या होगा NCO is also positive net capital outflow is positive it means the capital outflow is more than the capital inflow right so we can relate the two sides of the open economy on one side we talked about the trade of goods and services on the other side we have talked about the net capital outflow of the economy to dono ko aap relate kar sakte hain they cannot be separated from each other now an open economy version of uh, so so far we have discussed two sides of open economy on one side humne baat ki goods and services ki trade ki baat ki trade balance ki baat ki aur dusri jo side hoti hai uh, open economy country involve themselves in financial markets to wahan pe humne capital outflow aur inflow ki baat ki aur baad mein humne in dono ko combine kiya humne kaha ki net exports the trade balance is equal to the cap net capital outflow in dono mein aapas mein taluq hota hai kyunki jab trade deficit hota hai to kya hota hai nco wo bhi less than zero net capital outflow is less than zero means more capital inflow less capital outflow is the tarah and vice versa now we'll try to explain and uh, this is small open economy in terms of the loanable funds market uh, or saving investment ko wahan pe hum baat karenge jaisa ki humne previously closed economy mein bhi humne baat ki thi ki the main financial market of an economy is the loanable funds market isi tarah open economy mein bhi usko hum explain karenge when we have included the component of net export and imports in the economy so as we know that uh, production function uh, y is equal to y bar that is given y bar mean given level of output is depending on capital and labor where capital is fixed labor is also fixed then we have also know that consumption is the difference between income minus taxes सो uh, so, अगर आप इनकम uh, से टैक्सेस निकाल दें जो रिमेनिंग पार्ट ऑफ इनकम आपका होता है दैट इज योर कंजम्पन फंक्शन नाउ इन्वेस्टमेंट को भी हमने एक्सप्लेन किया इन द क्लोज इकोनॉमी एंड वी सेट दैट इन्वेस्टमेंट इज ए फंक्शन ऑफ इंटरेस्ट रेट आर द इन्वेस्टमेंट इज डिटर्मिन बाई द इंटरेस्ट रेट इन द इकोनॉमी एंड हमने ये कंक्लूड किया कि इन्वेस्टमेंट का और इंटरेस्ट रेट का आपस में इन्वर्स रिलेशनशिप होता है वेन एवर देर इज इंक्रीज इन इंटरेस्ट रेट इन द इकोनॉमी इन्वेस्टमेंट कम होती है जब इंटरेस्ट रेट बढ़ता है तो सॉरी जब इंटरेस्ट रेट कम होता है तो इन्वेस्टमेंट बढ़ जाती है नाउ एक्सोजिनसली बेसिकली वट वी हैव गिवन इन द इकानमी हमें पता है कि गवर्नमेंट स्पेंडिंग आर गिवन एंड टैक्सीज आर गिवन सो दीज आर नोन एक्सोजिनस पॉलिसी वेरिएबल सो वी कैन एक्सप्लेन द सप्लाई ऑफ लोनेबल फंड एज ए गिवन हमने ये कहा कि जितनी भी चीजें हैं सो वी इस इक्वेशन में जो हमारे नेशनल वाई माइनस सी वाई बार माइनस सी वाई माइनस टी माइनस जी बार सो द डिफरेंस बिटवीन इनकम एंड एक्सपेंडिचर इज नोन एज द सेविंग राइट सो वी सेट दैट दीज आर गिवन इन द इकानी तो उसी वजह से जो आपको नजर आ रहा है सामने कर्व जो है सप्लाई ऑफ लोनेबल फंड का दैट इज वर्टिकल सो वी हैव गिवन लेवल ऑफ सेविंग in the economy and given level of output and consumption in the economy so we can say that the saving uh, or the supply of loanable funds is given to us and that is why we get the vertical curve jo ke aapko samne nazar aa raha hai now 
विल कंटिन्यू दिस सेविंग ऑन इन्वेस्टमेंट फिनमिना पे कंटिन्यू रखेंगे एंड ट्राई टू ब्रिंग द डिमांड का एज यू नो दैट वेन वेन यू वेन वी टाक अबाउट एनी मार्केट वी नीड सप्लाई ऑन वन साइड and the demand on the other side so we have come up with the supply of loanable funds which is vertical which is given to the economy savings are given to the economy and now we'll talk about the demand so assumptions here that we are going to make uh, to find out the demand in the loanable funds market so domestic and foreign bonds are perfect substitute right there is same risk Uh, same maturity rates and so on so this is one of the assumption that we are going to make that domestic and foreign bonds are perfect substitute of each other the second is the perfect mobility of assets between the country there is no restrictions uh, of the assets to move between the country to so assets jo hai ek mulk se dusre mulk mein aasani se ja sakte hain un pe koi quotas nahi hote koi restrictions nahi hoti koi tariffs nahi hote to this is another assumption and the third is that uh, is uh, the economy is small we are talking about a small economy not a large economy so we have three assumptions uh, first is that we said that uh, domestic and foreign bonds are perfect substitute of each other second assumption jiski humne baat ki we said that there is a perfect mobility of the assets between the country assets jo hain ek mulk se dusre mulk mein aasani se जा सकते हैं कोई रिस्ट्रिक्शंस उन पर नहीं होती तीसरी एजम्पन हमने जो की इकानमी इज वेरी स्मॉल नॉट वेरी लार्ज सो वर्ल्ड इंटरेस्ट रेट इज डिनोटेड बाय आर स्टार तो जब हम वर्ल्ड इकानमी की बात करते हैं ओपन इकानमी की बात करते हैं तो आर इज डिनोटेड बाय आर स्टार नाउ नाउ द फर्स्ट टू एजम्पन ए एंड बी इंप्लॉय दैट R is equal to R star, यानी domestic interest rate is equal to the world interest rate, right? अगर जब हम पहली दो assumptions की बात करते हैं हमने ये कहा कि domestic और foreign uh, bonds are perfect substitute, तो uh, and secondly we said that foreign assets are uh, are the assets can move between the country without no restriction, uh, right? तो move कर सकते हैं तो ये जो दो एजम्पन्स हैं ये हमें मालूम करती हैं दिस विल हेल्प अस इम्प्लाई आस दैट आर इज इक्वल आर बार डोमेस्टिक इंटरेस्ट रेट इज इक्वल टू इंटरनेशनल इंटरेस्ट रेट सो सी जो एजम्पन है दैट इम्प्लाईज दैट आर इज गिवन आर इज एक्सॉजिनस राइट जिसमें हमने बात की इकोनॉमी ये स्माल जब इकोनॉमी स्माल होती है जो वर्ल्ड इंटरेस्ट रेट है सो so, उस इस एजम्पन से हमें ये मिलता है दर दर स्टार इज ऑल्सो गिवन सो फार वी हैव टॉक्ट अबाउट द सप्लाई साइड ऑफ लोनेबल फंड मार्केट और जैसा कि मैंने आपको बताया कि वी हैव गिवन लेवल ऑफ सेविंग इन द इकानमी and because of output is given to us and the consumption is given to us so we have vertical uh, uh supply curve of the loanable funds market so now i would like to tell you something about the because you know in any market we need to look at the supply side and the demand side both so on the demand side uh, uh, uh we can draw the relationship between the world interest rate which is r star and the investment uh, which is i and as as we know that there is inverse relationship between the interest rate and the investment agar interest rate badhta hai to investment kam hoti hai aur interest rate agar kam hoti hai kam hota hai to investment badh jati hai so because of this relationship we can get the negatively sloped uh, demand curve so we can combine the which is given uh, agar aap samne slide mein dekhe to aapko nazar aa raha hai जो कि नेगेटिवली स्लोप कर वे इन्वेस्टमेंट इज स्टिल डाउनवर्ड स्लोपिंग फंक्शन ऑफ द इंटरेस्ट रेट एंड द वर्ल्ड मार्केट बट द एक्सॉजिनस वर्ल्ड इंटरेस्ट रेट एज वी नो दैट इट इज गिवन और इट इज गिनस दंट्रीज लेवल ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट सो दैट ऑल्सो डिटर्मिन दंट्रीज लेवल ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट इन द इकानमी सो विल कम्बाइन दीज टू साइड ऑफ द लोनेबल फंड मार्केट दैट इज द डिमेंड साइड एंड द सप्लाई साइड एंड ट्राई टू ब्रिंग इक्म इन द लोनेबल फंड मार्केट इन एन ओपन इकानमी नो अगर इस डायग्राम में आप देखें सो वेन द इकानमी इफ द इकानमी वर क्लोज so we have given level of uh, this uh, savings curve uh, uh, it is vertical then investment curve is downward sloping and the economy is in equilibrium at point where both of these two curve jo ke aapko samne nazar aa rahe hain aapas mein intersect kar rahe hain 
एंड जहाँ पे इंटर सेट करते हैं द वे एट दिस पॉइंट सेविंग इज इक्वल टू इन्वेस्टमेंट एंड दिस आल्सो डिटरमिन द इंटरेस्ट रेट इन द कंट्री इन द इकानमी आल्सो नाउ द इंटरेस्ट रेट वुड एडजस्ट टू इक्वेट सेविंग एंड इन्वेस्टमेंट तो इन्वेस्टमेंट रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट जो है एक अपना रोल प्ले करता है जो कि दोनों को सेविंग एंड इन्वेस्टमेंट को एडजस्ट करता है और इकानमी में इक्लिब्रियम डिटर्मिन करता है नाउ वेन वी टाक अबाउट ए स्मॉल ओपन इकानमी अभी जो इन प्रीवियस स्लाइड में हमने बात की इन ए वी टाक अबाउट द रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन सेविंग एंड इन्वेस्टमेंट इन ए क्लोज इकानमी एंड विद द हेल्प ऑफ लोन एबल फंड मार्केट नौ इस स्लाइड में जो आपको सामने नजर आ रही है और इस डायग्राम के जरिए हम एक्सप्लेन करने की कोशिश करेंगे कि किस तरह से आप लोनेबल फंड्स मार्केट में इक्लिबियम डिटर्मिन कर सकते हैं वेन द इकानमी इज ओपन एंड इट स्मॉल इकानमी सो Uh, as we know that the supply curve in open economy uh, in the market is again given or it is vertical and the investment curve is downward sloping both of these two curve are intersecting at a point and that you can give any point a name to this point jahan pe ye dono intersect kar rahe hain so this point could be an equilibrium point in the economy and this determines the world interest rate jo ke aaj start se hum show kar rahe hain and this also determine the world investment and saving at this point at this interest rate which is equal to each other and that determines the equilibrium in the loanable funds market when the economy is open now we'll try to explain why we call this an equilibrium now suppose if we say that the world interest rate is above than this equilibrium interest rate to ya agar diagram mein dekhein agar r is r star is greater than r c so what is happening at r star kya surat e hal hai तो यहाँ आर स्टार पे अगर आप देखें तो सप्लाई ऑफ लोनेबल फंड्स इज ग्रेटर देन द डिमांड फॉर लोनेबल फंड्स तो जब सप्लाई ज्यादा होती है डिमांड से तो व्हाट विल हैपन टू द प्राइस ऑफ फंड्स लोनेबल फंड्स द प्राइस ऑफ लोनेबल फंड हेयर इज द इंटरेस्ट रेट तो जब सप्लाई इज ग्रेटर देन डिमांड सो दिस विल पुट द प्रेशर ऑन द इंटरेस्ट रेट एंड इंटरेस्ट रेट गोज डाउन जब इंटरेस्ट रेट कम होता है तो इन्वेस्टमेंट बढ़ती है इन्वेस्टमेंट जब बढ़ती है और सेविंग्स कम होती हैं तो द इकोनॉमी विल मूव टूवर्ड्स द इक्लिब्रियम वेयर बोथ ऑफ दीज टू कर्व आर इंटरसेक्टिंग ईच अदर सिमिलरली इफ वी टेक ए पॉइंट बिलो देन दिस इक्लिब्रियम राइट अगर कोई ऐसा पॉइंट वर्ल्ड इंटरेस्ट रेट जो है आर सी से बिलो है तो वाट इज हैपनिंग देयर यहाँ पे अगर आप देखें डिमांड ऑफ लोनेबल फंड इज ग्रेटर देन दी सप्लाई ऑफ लोनेबल फंड तो जब डिमांड ज्यादा होती है सप्लाई से लोनेबल फंड से तो वट विल हैपन तो मीन्स देर इज शॉर्टेज ऑफ लोनेबल फंड जब शॉर्टेज होती है तो क्या होती है उसकी जो प्राइस है लोनेबल फंड की विच इज इंटरेस्ट रेट गोज आप जब इंटरेस्ट रेट बढ़ता है तो इन्वेस्टमेंट कम होती है उधर से सेविंग्स जो है बढ़ जाती हैं तो इकोनॉमी विल मूव टूवर्ड्स इक्लिब्रियम पॉइंट वेयर बोथ सेविंग एंड इन्वेस्टमेंट आर इक्वल आर इंटरसेक्टिंग ईच अदर तो वी कैन से दैट विद दिस एक्सप्लेनेशन वी कैन कंक्लूड दैट इकोनॉमी वेदर इट इज क्लोज इकोनॉमी आर ओपन इकोनॉमी इज एट इक्लिब्रियम वेयर सेविंग्स आर इक्वल टू इन्वेस्टमेंट एंड दैट डिटर्मिन्स द वर्ल्ड इंटरेस्ट रेट आल्सो एंड इंटरेस्ट रेट इन द लोकल एंड डोमेस्टिक मार्केट आल्सो and the exogenous world interest rate determines investment as we talked about and the difference between saving and investment determines the net capital outflow jaisa ki humne piche baat ki ke jo difference hota hai saving aur investment ka that determines the net capital outflow agar hum ye kahe ki savings are greater than investment to humne pehle jaisa ki explain kiya jab saving investment se zyada hoti hain to uh, the country or the people in the country try to purchase foreign assets they try to do investment in foreign countries and in that case capital outflow is greater than the capital inflow so net capital outflow is positive right to jab saving investment se zyada hongi net capital outflow पॉजिटिव होगा एंड वेन सेविंग आर लेस देन इन्वेस्टमेंट तो नेट कैपिटल आउटफ्लो इज नेगेटिव 
Now we'll try to explain this uh, equilibrium in the loanable funds market with the help of three different experiments. Uh, three experiments ki hum baat karenge. I try to explain and uh, the equilibrium in the loanable funds market. What are those three experiments? First, we'll talk about the fiscal policy at home. Right. So whenever, suppose if there is a change in fiscal policy, right, either from the expenditure side or the revenue side, so what will happen to the loanable funds market? We'll see that with the help of diagram. थोड़ी देर में और सेकंड एक्सपेरिमेंट जिसकी हम आज बात करेंगे दैट वुड बी फिजिकल पॉलिसी अब्रॉड राइट सो इफ द गवर्नमेंट चेंजेस फॉरेन स्पेंडिंग्स आर फॉरेन रेवेन्यूज तो व्हाट विल हैपन टू द लोनेबल फंड मार्केट इसको भी तफसील से हम देखेंगे आज एंड द तीसरा जो एक्सपेरिमेंट जिसकी हम बात करेंगे दैट इज इंक्रीज इन इन्वेस्टमेंट डिमांड इफ देर इज इंक्रीज अ चेंज इन इन्वेस्टमेंट डिमांड सो व्हाट विल हैपन to the loanable funds market to teen experiments ka effect dekhenge hum loanable funds market pe pehla kya hai we'll talk about the effect of fiscal policy at home then fiscal policy at abroad and the third is increase in investment demand to in teen experiments ko ek ek karke hum dekhte hain aur samajhne ki koshish karte hain ki kis tarah se ye experiments effect kar sakte hain loanable funds market ko so we'll start with the first experiment which is about fiscal policy at home now suppose any increase in g or decrease in taxes right agar government spending badhati hai ya taxes kam karti hai to ek hi tarah ka effect hota hai to what will happen jab government ki spending badhti hain aur ya revenue kam hota hai to it means it reduces savings savings कम हो जाती हैं तो इफ यू लुक इन द डायग्राम वी हैव इन्वेस्टमेंट कर्व आर द डिमांड कर्व विच इज नोन एज डिमांड कर्व इन द लोनेबल फार्म मार्केट मार्केट विच इज डाउनवर्ड स्लोपिंग एंड वी हैव सेविंग कर्व विच इज गिवन वर्टिकल बोथ ऑफ दीज टू कर्व आर इंटरसेक्टिंग इच अदर एंड डिटर्मिन इक्लिब्रियम इन द लोनेबल फंड मार्केट नाउ वट विल हैपन इफ हम इफेक्ट देख रहे हैं कि अगर फिजिकल पॉलिसी एट होम विद इन द कंट्री अगर तब्दीली आती है तो वट विल हैपन इन एन इंक्रीज इन जी और डिक्रीज इन टैक्स विल इंक्रीज रिड्यूस सेविंग तो सेविंग कार जो है लेफ्ट वर्ड शिफ्ट हो जाएगा जो कि आपको डायग्राम में अगर आप देखें तो रेड लाइन से शो किया गया है तो रेड द कर्व विद रेड लाइन इज द न्यू कर्व आर दफ सेविंग दैट इज आफ्टर द इंक्रीज इन स्पेंडिंग आर डिक्रीज इन taxes now that new curve is intersecting demand curve at a new point right so that is the new equilibrium so what is happening in the loanable farm market ki jab aap uh, government spending badhati hai to saving kam hoti hai to loanable funds market mein kya hoga aapki jo uh, net export hai wo that will go down jab savings kam hoti hain humne ye kaha tha ki when savings are less what happens Uh, uh, there will be less capital outflow and more capital inflow or we can say that nco will be negative when nco net capital outflow is negative this will lead towards an x that net difference between export and exports will become also negative so what we can conclude after the first experiment agar government apni expenditure badhati hai ya taxes kam karti hai to usse savings kam ho jayengi and what will happen to the loanable markets in an open economy net exports kam ho jayengi aur jab net exports kam ho jayengi to naturally net capital outflow bhi kam ho jayega aur wo negative ho jayega right so this is the effect of fiscal policy at home on loanable funds market when we talk about an open economy so result is zero investment and both delta nx and delta s is less than zero and this will lead to negative of a sign of net capital outflow also now second experiment ki hum baat karte hain and the second experiment is about fiscal policy abroad jab fiscal policy abroad ki baat kare to what it means uh it means expansionary fiscal policy abroad raises the world interest rate तो जब वर्ल्ड इंटरेस्ट रेट बढ़ता है जब एक्सपेंशनरी फिजिकल पॉलिसी गवर्नमेंट अडॉप्ट करती है एट द इंटरनेशनल लेवल सो व्हाट विल हैपन टू द वर्ल्ड इंटरेस्ट रेट एंड वर्ल्ड इंटरेस्ट रेट बढ़ जाएगा जब वर्ल्ड इंटरेस्ट रेट बढ़ता है तो क्या इफेक्ट होगा उसका इन्वेस्टमेंट पे इन्वेस्टमेंट कम हो जाएगी जब इन्वेस्टमेंट कम होगी तो नेचुरली सेविंग्स ज्यादा होंगी वेन सेविंग्स आर ग्रेटर देन इन्वेस्टमेंट सो दैट शोज और दैट टेल्स अस दैट 
uh, net exports are positive and when net exports are positive it this tells us that NCO net capital outflow is also positive so the result will be less investment and delta and change in net exports is equal to change in uh, investment is positive so that means net capital outflow is also positive so when we say that net capital outflow is positive it means more capital is coming inside the country capital inflow is greater than the capital outflow so economy is moving towards positive side jab zyada capital aa raha hai zyada foreign investment kisi mulk mein ho rahi hai right so as compared to the capital outflow which is less as compared to the capital inflow so we can say that economy is growing halat achhe ho rahe hain behtar ho rahe hain logon ka standard of living behtar ho jayega right so the effect of uh, fiscal policy which is expansionary fiscal policy at abroad raises the world interest rate helps to increase the net exports in the country net exports of the country so the net exports badhti hain to net capital outflow bhi badhta hai so that tells us the difference between the fiscal policy at home and fiscal policy at abroad so this was the second experiment on uh, loanable funds market now we'll talk about what will happen to the loanable funds market if there is change in the investment demand now suppose if the investment demand goes up so we have this initial situation right so we have investment i i1 curve and s curve both are intersecting at a point where which determines the interest rate in the world market which determines the investment and saving in the world market now suppose if we have any interest rate which is above than this equilibrium so what is happening supply is greater than investment uh, demand so when supply is more than demand so that basically it push the interest rate down interest rate come hoga and gradually the economy moves towards the equilibrium point where s is equal to i now this is exercise like use this model which is given to you in front of you and we'll try to uh, we'll try to determine the impact of increase in investment demand on net exports saving investment and net capital outflow right to hum uh, investment badhne ka effect dekhenge char cheezon pe kaun kaun si char cheezon pe jaisa ki humne pichle diagrams mein dekha कि हमने फिजिकल पॉलिसी एट होम एंड अब्रॉड की केस में भी, भी यही देखा कि जब वेन एवर देर इज चेंज इन फिजिकल पॉलिसी एट होम और अब्रॉड इट कैन इफेक्ट फोर थिंग्स दैट इज द नेट एक्सपोर्ट्स सेविंग्स इन्वेस्टमेंट एंड कैपिटल आउटफ्लो एंड इनफ्लो इफेक्ट कर इसी तरह वेन एवर देर इज अ चेंज इन इन्वेस्टमेंट डिमांड इट कैन ऑल्सो इफेक्ट द सेविंग्स इन्वेस्टमेंट net export and capital net capital outflow so we'll see this in the next diagram now suppose if there is increase in investment so what will happen to the investment curve jab investment badhti hai the investment curve rightward shift ho jata hai to jaisa ki aapko samne ke diagram mein nazar aa raha hai ke it is shown with green line to green color ke sath jo line hai this is the new investment curve uh, so that is ir2 now what is happening so when there is increase in investment demand so with the increase in investment demand or increase in investment so savings jo hai wo kam ho jati hai saving zero ho jati hai jitni ki investment hoti hai wo sari ki sari invest ho jati hai right so net capital outflow and net exports fall by the percentage that is delta investment this percentage se investment badhti hai usi percentage se aapki jo net exports hain economy ki ya net capital outflow hai wo kam ho jata hai right suppose if investment goes up by 5% to net capital outflow or net export be utne percent se 5% ke hisab se kam ho jati hai right so jab domestic investment badh jati hai to naturally there is less to export uh, less to uh, imports are more than the exports to net export kam hona shuru ho jati hai aur isi tarah net capital outflow jo hai wo bhi fall karna shuru kar deta hai so what we have seen the effect of uh uh increase in investment demand so we have seen three things uh, uh the effect on investment jo ki positive hai effect on saving which is neg zero so savings will be zero and the effect on net exports and net capital flow is 
uh, negative both of the nx and nco starts falling down on me kami vaqya hona shuru ho jati hai by the amount of change in investment to teen experiments ki humne baat ki ke we have talked about three different experiments that can affect savings investment and uh, net exports net capital outflow with the help of loanable funds market in an open economy to teen kaun kaun se experiments humne dekhe fiscal policy at home fiscal policy at abroad and the third is increase in investment demand so uh, this was all about today's lecture so now i will try to summarize in few minutes uh, so what we have learned today so what we have covered in the beginning first i tell you the difference between export and imports and that that difference is is uh, is equal to net exports of an economy ओपन इकानमी तो जब कंट्री अपने आप को ट्रेड में इन्वॉल्व करती है इकानमी को ओपन करती है चीज़ें बाहर से खरीदती भी है बाहर चीज़ें बेचती भी है तो दैट इज द ओपन इकानमी आर द ट्रेड सो इन दैट केस एक्सपोर्ट्स और इम्पोर्ट्स की हम बात करते हैं और द दोनों का जो डिफरेंस है वो दैट टेल्स अस द नेट एक्सपोर्ट्स ऑफ ए कंट्री नेट एक्सपोर्ट्स ऑफ एन इकानमी तो जब नेट एक्सपोर्ट्स की हम बात करते हैं तो इसमें बात करते हैं ट्रेड बैलेंस की ट्रेड सरप्लस की ट्रेड डेफिसिट की तो ट्रेड सरप्लस विल बी देयर व्हेन एन एक्स इज ग्रेटर देन आई एम सो ट्रेड डेफिसिट इज वेन एन एक्स सॉरी एक्स द डिफरेंस बिटवीन एक्सपोर्ट्स माइनस imports is uh, negative to wo deficit mein hoga when both these two are equal exports and imports are equal so that gives us the trade is in balance so this is one side of the open economy humne kaha ke export aur imports ka different uh, is known as the net export and that is also known as the trade balance a country output and its spending are when are equal our exports or imports are equal to so trade is in balance our country trade is in balance both exports are imports are equal so this was the one side of the open market dusri jo humne baat ki dusri side pe jo open market ki humne baat ki we talked about the net capital outflow of the economy to so isme humne baat ki that is the net capital outflow is the difference between purchase of foreign assets minus the foreign purchases of the country's assets so the difference between it is also it can also be explained the difference between savings and investment to dono ka jo difference hai wo bhi that tells us the net capital outflow of the economy no net capital outflow is equal to capital outflow minus capital inflow right so if नेट सो आफ्टर दिस हमने इन दोनों मार्केट्स को हमने एक साइड पे गुड्स मार्केट की बात की दूसरी साइड पे फाइनेंशियल मार्केट की बात की ओपन इकोनॉमी में एंड देन वी हैव कंबाइन दीज टू मार्केट्स वी हैव सेड दैट एन एक्स इज इक्वल टू एन सी ओ राइट नो हाउ वी कैन रिलेट दीज टू साइड ऑफ द टू मार्केट्स इन एन ओपन इकोनॉमी वी सेड दैट इफ एन एक्स इज पॉजिटिव इफ नेट एक्सपोर्ट्स आर पॉजिटिव इट मीन सेविंग्स आर ग्रेटर दैन इन्वेस्टमेंट सो वेन सेविंग्स आर ग्रेटर दैन इन्वेस्टमेंट नेट कैपिटल आउटफ्लो इज ऑल्सो पॉजिटिव सो वेन वी से दैट नेट कैपिटल आउटफ्लो इज पॉजिटिव इट मीन्स एंड वी हैव मोर कैपिटल आउटफ्लो एंड लेस कैपिटल इनफ्लो एंड वाइस वर्सा सो वी कैन एक्सप्लेन द लिंक बिटवीन टू डिफरेंट मार्केट्स एंड ओपन इकोनॉमी एक मार्केट की हमने गुड्स मार्केट बात की जहां पर हमने एक्सपोर्ट और इम्पोर्ट्स की बात की और दूसरी साइड पर दूसरी मार्केट की जो हमने बात की दैट इज कैपिटल मार्केट आर द फाइनेंशियल मार्केट यहां पर हमने कैपिटल फ्लोज की बात की एंड वी हैव टाक अबाउट the capital outflow and capital inflow right so the difference between these two tells us the net capital inflow to dono markets ko aap link up kar sakte hain and then we have talked about the supply of uh, and demand of loanable funds we have tried to explain the equilibrium with the help of uh, loanable funds market to jahan pe sabse pehle humne supply curve determine kiya and we said that the supply curve is given or vertical 
and then we have determined the investment or the demand curve in the loanable markets in an open economy jo ke negatively sloped hai that tells us the relationship between the world interest rate and the investment in the economy to uske baad that is the negatively slope and then we have determines the equilibrium in the loanable markets and that is the point where both investment and savings are equal and that point determines the world interest rate and after that we usme humne teen experiments ki baat ki ke what will happen to the equilibrium if we use these three different experiment kaun kaun se teen experiment humne seekhe aaj pehla humne kaha a change in fiscal policy at home so whenever there is a change in fiscal policy at home it can disturb the equilibrium in the economy uske baad humne baat ki whenever there is change in the fiscal policy at abroad right whether expansionary fiscal policy our contraction of fiscal policy both can alter affect the loanable markets in the open economy and last experiment jiski humne baat ki that was about the increase in investment demand so if there is a change in investment demand or increase or decrease in investment demand it can affect the world market through world interest rate to teen different experiments ki humne baat ki and we tried to determine the effect of those experiments on savings investment net exports and capital outflow and inflow in the economy so this was all about students uh, in uh, in today's lecture to so, aaj ka lecture yahan pe khatam karte hain and till the next time see you god bless you allah hafiz